Okay, so I'm here with Austin and Thomas, and you guys just finished running uh, part of the competition here. How'd it go for you? Uh, it went pretty well. We just did the equipment service task, and uh, I don't think we got our final score yet, but uh, we did pretty good, much better than last year, where I think we only flicked the switch on yeah. and off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this year, we actually managed to turn two of the valves and flick the switch on and off, so it's yeah, actually a the, huge... The meter and all that stuff? Yeah, and we managed to read the meter. Well, we tried to. It was broken, but we tried to read the meter, yeah. and uh, yeah, it was really fun. Awesome. Fun. Now, I know we just have you guys here, but we have a whole crew back here. You brought a lot of people. How many folks do you have on the team in total? Uh, we brought about 10 out here today um, to URC, but on team uh, back at uh, Saskatchewan, we have, I'd say, 20 to 25 members. So Wow. We make sure to, we make sure to keep our uh, membership pretty open so people can drop in and out, uh, but about 20 core members that work on the rover common like all the time what kind of team members do you have i mean are they all engineers do you have other kinds of folks what kind of people comprise this team uh that's a good question actually we take uh, all kinds of students from campus we have business students uh we have a student from medicine we have uh, our next president is actually going to be a political and uh, economics major so we, uh, we do uh, all over the board and you put different people to use uh, for different tasks that they happen to be specialized in or, or how's that work Exactly. Like we have, we break down into different teams. We have the main two teams are our mechanical team and electrical team. But then we also have a fundraising group and uh, different groups like that that kind of take different tasks that are needed for administration and other things. Awesome. Okay. So I notice when I'm looking at your robot here that you got a lot of stickers on there. It seems like uh, there's a lot of uh, of sponsors and things. Tell me, tell me a little bit about what kind of folks you guys have uh, that you're working with here. Well, we uh, try to reach out to local companies as well as some of the larger companies. I know um, we have a lot of local groups uh, all over the place. Uh, our university also gives us a lot of money, and we look for personal donations. It's a big part of our team this year especially because we've done a very big uh, personal fundraising campaign. Uh, we're, also, nice. we're also celebrating our 10th uh, anniversary as a team this year, and wow. so we were able to have a, a nice banquet right before we left on the Friday before we came here. So it was a lot of fun. Big eats beforehand. Okay, so uh, this, this is an impressive piece of machinery. So can you guys walk me through? T tell me about the uh, anatomy of a robot here. Uh, for sure. So the outside of it, I'll start with, we have a rocker bogey suspension, which is similar to what you see on a Mars rover uh, on Mars right now. Uh, the difference is that these rovers have to go a lot faster, uh, so we beefed it up a lot uh, with uh, aluminum plates on both sides to reduce the bending from the skid steer. Uh, but we're also able to remove some weight by uh, designing the holes to be cut, and these were laser, laser cut. And then on the outside, we have a, uh, a, a very thin aluminum case to keep the dust out, and that was actually laser cut by protocase and bent in shape by protocase. And then uh, there's a by the way, that's a pretty complex design. I mean, who did you guys do it in CAD, or how did how did the design come to be? Uh, so we have a few members of the mechanical team actually uh, drew it up in a program called SolidWorks, and then which is actually uh, they gave us a discount on their software. So go SolidWorks. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best kind. <laughs> so. Uh, once we do uh, the drawing in SolidWorks, we export that model and we give it to Protocase. And Protocase can actually take that SolidWorks file and uh, make it exactly to scale. And so, uh, so they did a great job and everything fit really well. Awesome. And how about uh, these legs? You said you had these laser cut. Where did those get laser cut at? Uh, they were cut by a, a local company just near the university. Awesome. Okay, what else we got going on here? Uh, one of the coolest things which was super useful for this challenge was the head tracking camera. We wear a 3D Oculus Rift to just put in your face like goggles, and then the camera will move around with your head, So, and it's in real time and everything to try to stop you from getting sick. Uh, it's really helpful for depth perception with the, the two cameras, as well as it's really fast, so like you don't see any leg or anything like that. Cool. And really great for looking at the arm, because if the arm's kind of over there, you can see it from a good angle to get the you know, distances from the, the panel and all that. Now, does that use a lot of bandwidth? Because I know there's, there's, there's some challenges with connectivity and communications out here in the middle of the desert. You're gonna have to ask that guy. <laughs> I am the mechanical. Yeah, so on our rover system we have this big tall antenna for everything else, but in order to keep like the leg and the control as fine as possible for the Oculus Rift, uh, we actually have two separate antennas just for that only to keep everything away from it. And they run at different frequencies as well than the main uh, rover to prevent interference where we can. 
Awesome. And now tell me a little bit about this arm because it seems like the, the arm comes into play on a lot of these different challenges. So uh, anything special about that? Uh, sure. So actually this year we had a group of uh, four or five dedicated uh, about to graduate students uh, working on the arm. And so uh, what we have here is uh, these uh, parallel actuators uh, will move uh, the arm and then the third actuator there in series uh, adjusts the angle of the end effector and then using inverse kinematics we're able to kind of plot uh, up down left right positions of the end effector which makes it a lot easier and more intuitive for the operator and uh, basically makes for quicker and smoother operations when doing things like equipment servicing um, and stuff like that. So, awesome. So out there on the task we just did, instead of having to worry about moving every actuator manually, all we had to do is we just had a guy just moving a slider up and down to go vertical, forward, in and out. So it's really easy and like really easy on your brain too when you're <laughs> under the stress. Well, operator uh, error is a concern out here in addition to vehicle mal malfunction. Okay. So anything you can do. Did you guys write custom software to make that happen or how did that, how did that come to be? Everything's completely from scratch. Um, I mean, there's a couple of libraries here and there we use, but mostly the software, the electronics design, everything we've done ourselves. The PCBs, we actually spent a lot of time uh, being a custom process. So we built them in-house uh, using a laser etcher. It was a lot of fun to do that too.